here we are in Father Murray's favorite building. Very little room here, but uh, there's a mountain of history and thought in here. Father Murray had the idea that he would build a tower to God. And the reason for that was that even though he was a Catholic priest, he wanted people to understand that it doesn't really matter what religion you belong to, so long as you recognize that you are a created human being and that you have a personal relationship with your creator. Now he chose what he called the three monotheistic religions, known as the three founding religions, which are uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Even though in the religion of Islam they don't recognize God as we understand it, they do recognize the whole idea of the Creator. What he wanted to show was not one particular religion, but the fact that these three powerful religions all head in one direction. It's the one God. There aren't different gods for the different religions which was a very radical idea in 1950, 49, 50, just right after the war. And he was sometimes referred to as the crazy priest because of his ideas. He corresponded with world leaders everywhere from a very early age. And in this instance, he corresponded with a very moderate, but very powerful Muslim leader in Pakistan whose name was Ayub Muhammad Khan about the whole idea. Now we know from the tensions day after day in different parts of the world that these three religions have a heck of a time trying to get along with each other. But this great Muslim leader loved Father Murray's idea of one tower, one structure representing all three. A very, very prominent Regina lawyer uh, by the name of Morris Shumiacher, you know, a, a great Jew, he loved the idea. So he rounded up support from the Jewish community for this structure. Ayub Muhammad Khan of Pakistan brought in the Muslim support. And uh, of course, he didn't have much problem getting the Christian support. And from Rome, a piece of uh, the true wood of the cross was presented to Father Murray for the purpose of uh, adding it to the tower. But he wanted you to really understand that each one of you are a special creation. Each one of you has a destiny, and that will unfold as you go along in life. And be in whatever religion you are comfortable in. It didn't matter. The most important thing was your relationship with God, your relationship with your Creator. You are the future, not just of Canada, you're the future of the world. There are wonderful windows in this tower. The window by the famous French stained glass window artist, André Roux, and that was specially commissioned for this tower. World famous stained glass artist. Here on this wall, there's the window of the famous scene where Abraham was about to sacrifice his son. And you can see the hand of God coming down and saying, you don't have to do that. And yet, the story of Abraham is that he was willing to do this because of his relationship with God. This window here is um, a little bit controversial, and this has its origin in the parting of the Red Sea, 
as you can see the prophet pointing up to the sky to the hand of judgment coming down and in here and you can see the waves coming over them uh, are Hitler, Stalin and Mussolini. Modern take on the parting of the Red Sea and those who shouldn't survive didn't survive. <laughs> These are uh, thoughts of great thinkers that Father Murray collected over the years. And many of them uh, were at Father Murray's request. He corresponded with world leaders everywhere. He would ask them for a statement in their own words. Though they were powerful in their own life, that they recognized a higher power. Dwight Eisenhower, no man or nation can afford to ignore God. That was his response. John F. Kennedy, these rights we hold from the hands of God. He loved to have his students and challenged his students to come in and read these and ponder them. And this is an amazing one. His quote of Charles Darwin, the grand sequence of events the mind refuses to accept as the result of blind chance. He didn't come out right and say we had a creator, but you could see that even in Darwin there was a struggle. And Father Murray picked up on that. Plato, Adenauer, there's one from Churchill, cousins, you know, they're all there. It's an incredible wall. The statue in the middle is called the Laocoon, and this is a Greek statue, probably from around five, six hundred years before Christ. This statue tells the story of the priest. He was a high priest, and his name was Laocoon. And these are his two sons. They are the ones who try to warn the citizens of Troy about the perils of accepting the gift of the wooden horse from Greece. The god of the sea, Poseidon, sent the snakes out of the swamps to destroy him because he interfered with the plans. Laocoon was killed and his, both of his sons were killed. There are two different interpretations. One is that this is when evil overcame good. They were trying to do good and they were overcome by evil. And um, the other one, which uh, Father Murray took, was that, yes, evil overcame good, but Lao Kun, both of his sons, they wrestled with evil without God. And in our humanity, we are not strong enough on our own to take on evil in this world. It's an incredible piece of sculpture. He created this tower to honor God but in a roundabout way what he was talking about was peace. The whole purpose of doing this was to bring peace and understanding and tolerance between the three religions. And out of that, because he got support from Ayub Muhammad Khan, he got support from the last descendant of Muhammad, which was um, King Hussein of Jordan. And King Faisal, of Saudi Arabia, who was the great recognized Muslim leader in the uh, 1970s, uh, invited Father Murray to come to Saudi Arabia to talk about this plan he had of building a tower over there. So when they sat down, in uh, February of 1975, Father Murray requested of him 
that the king make an agreement with the Jews. And he said, I want you to make an agreement with the Jews to have Jerusalem declared an international city and to build in that city with your enormous wealth a tower to God that would be on a massive scale so that all three religions could go there. They wouldn't have to mix, but they could all go there and go there, he figured, in tolerance. And he said, if you can do that in Jerusalem, you will have peace in the Middle East. And King Faisal's response to that is, it really is, is a strange one, and a wonderful one in a sense, because he didn't say no to that. His response was that you, Father Murray, will never get the Jews to agree to this. So Father Murray took that as a yes. And so his response was to, to the king was then, I believe I can. I'm going there in four or five weeks. I believe I can get the Jews to agree to this. And King Faisal's response to that with a steely eye and a pointed finger, he said, if you go there, Father Murray, I fear for your life. There's that great a distrust between the Muslims and the Jews of, uh, at that time. Sadly, as, as preposterous as the idea sounds, it never got a chance to get off the, because the, um, the king, two weeks after that photograph was taken, was assassinated. That was in February 1975, and in December 1975, Father Murray died. So it never had a chance to, yeah, it was a tragic year. But what an amazing, that gives you a sense of how global he was, you know, and he wanted his students to be the same. He said, I'm not going to be around forever. You guys and you girls, you have to pick up that and carry it on. He said he would change the world from here. Not him personally, but you guys. You would change the world. Mm -hmm.